Tidings, tidings of comfort and joy. Oh, tidings, oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Oh, tidings, oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. God rescue every gentleman. Let nothing you dismay. Remember. Our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray.
I bring you good news of great joy. A Savior has been born to you. Alleluia. Unto us a child is born, a son is given. Alleluia. He is Christ the Lord. We worship and adore him. Alleluia. Well, welcome and happy Christmas. Great to see you all today. Uh, it's a fantastic day. We're going to have a great service together and we're going to celebrate Jesus being born. Tell me this, Rich. We're expecting a lot of people joining us this morning, which is very exciting. How far do you think the furthest people are that are watching us today? Well, based on our online watching so far, I'm reckoning as far as Australia. Goodness me. Well, should we find out? If you could put into the chat box now where you're watching from. Um, if we've got anybody from Scotland, give us a wave in the chat box. Anybody from Wales? Give us a wave. Are you watching from the continent this morning? Then we'd love to hit, see you in the chat box. So send our greetings to you in the chat box. Now comes the moment of real pain, which is where we find out how early did you have to get up this morning? So traditionally, 2.30 is usually the earliest uh, and usually the latest someone went to bed as well. Um, but what was it for you? Pop in the chat box what time you had to get up this morning, uh, and did someone get you up, or were you just so excited you had to get up? What time were you up this morning, Rich? Well, I do get quite excited about Christmas, so it was seven o'clock. That, that's relatively early, but I suspect some people can beat that, so let's see. But also, of course, wh who went to bed latest? That is the other one. How late were you wrapping your presents till? Personally, I was in bed by 11. Good. It's the way to go. Yeah. You missed the service last night. Never mind. Well done for being there. Let's pray, shall we, as we lead into worship. Lord, thank you uh, that this is such a good day to celebrate and worship together. Uh, may you be in our hearts, firmly in our hearts, as you came into our world. We want to give you honor, praise, and thanksgiving this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to head over to Marcus and the choir. Um, do enter in with full hearts to singing along with this carol.
wow, what a lovely um, moment that was. Thank you so much, Marcus and the choir. Happy Christmas, everybody, from me. It's so lovely to see you. We're actually going to have a moment right now where we're just going to head over to Zoom. And kids, we would, and grown-ups, actually, we would love to see what you got for Christmas. The more unusual, the more wacky. I meant to show you my sock dryer that my nan bought for us, but I forgot it. The more sort of funny present that you've got, bring it, and we'd love to see those on Zoom um, right now. For the, and the link for that is gonna appear in the chat box as I'm talking to you. Um, if that's not for you, that's absolutely fine. Marcus and the choir are gonna lead us in another song, um, and we'll join back here in just a minute. See you soon.
Brilliant. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us on Zoom. We so loved seeing all your presence. They're brilliant. I'm going to hand over now to Ine, who is going to bring us our first reading this morning. Over to you, Ine. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius... was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. When they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. I'm ready. Go. Hello, church. I'm going to tell the nativity story. Once upon a time, there was a girl called Mary and she was going to give birth to a baby. Who's that? Baby Jesus. And what happens on Christmas? Is it his birthday? <gasps> Once a long time ago, an angel appeared. God sent the angel Gabriel to visit a young woman named Mary. She was scared. She had never seen an angel before. Gabriel said, do not be afraid. You are very special to God. You become pregnant to give birth to a son. You must name him Jesus. He will be called the son of the most high God. Mary asked the angel, How can it be so? I'm not married. But the angel said, With God, all things are possible. Mary and Joseph are going to get married soon. Caesar Augustus ordered everyone to go back to their hometowns to be counted. So Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem. Um, and it was a long journey, so they went on the donkey. Arrived in Bethlehem, they looked for a safe place for Mary to have the baby. But there wasn't any room in, 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 in a hotel, because it was closed. Was it full for the census? No, it was closed. There's no where for them to sleep. They found a stable, and while they were there, Jesus was born. Woohoo! Jesus is Oh, suddenly there were lots of angels singing. Oh, there you love. Then Maybe. the innkeeper oh. made a party. On the night Jesus was born, shepherds were watching their sheep as an angel appeared to them, singing and praising God. Oh, they go to Bethlehem to see. Baby Jesus. The angel told them to go to the place where Jesus had been born, so they left their sheep and went. Did three wise men see something in the, in the sky? Yes, a star. God put a special star in the sky. New star, brighter than all the others. They followed the star for like for like a month or two. So they went to the stable after December. That's what some people think. They saw Joseph, Mary, and the little king Jesus. The three wise men worshipped Jesus and gave him special gifts. One was gold, and one was myrrh, and one was frankincense. And then Jesus grew up and then he had disciples and saved the world. He is the light of the world. And today he lives in my heart. That is why we celebrate Christmas today. And that's a nativity story. The end. <laughs> Happy Christmas. Happy what? Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Well done.
shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thank you for those readings. Welcome back, friends. Why don't you keep your Bibles open at the passage that we've read, um, beginning in chapter 2, verse 1. And I want to talk about, actually, some of the Christmas dilemmas um, that have come into the Christmas story over years. And I want to propose to you this morning that there is no such thing as an innkeeper in the Christmas story. So right now, put your hands up if you have ever played the role of innkeeper in a school drama, a Christmas production, you've been innkeeper in any of our nativity things at the church. Well, I want to break it to you softly. You weren't even there. There is no such thing as an inn in the Bible story. Now, my Bible is actually quite old. And so the language hasn't particularly been updated. But I'm going to read to you what it says in chapter 2, verse 7. So have a look at that. Maybe your Bible um, says the same, maybe not. Mine says this, And she gave birth 
to her firstborn a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, other Bibles have changed that word to guest room. And immediately, that's the local publican out of a job. And it's quite correct. It should read guest room, not in. And so, and that has important implications for us as to how we understand the Christmas story. I've done a little diagram for you here, um, very high tech, of a typical Palestinian home at the time that Jesus was born. Ta da! And this typified what was around in the time. Every house had a guest room and you can see my guest room here which was either on the roof of the house or just behind the house and as was often the way it was a very mobile culture where people traveled and typically here Mary and Joseph because of the census traveling to Bethlehem actually Joseph's hometown where he would have known many, many people. And so it would not be unusual for them to arrive and for people to say, welcome, come into our homes. And typically they would have stayed in the guest room. But let's not forget, there is a census going on. And so Bethlehem would have been really crowded. And so we understand from the Christmas story, when it says there is no room in the guest room or there was no room at the inn. It's not that they were cast out and they had to go down the road into the middle of nowhere to some remote little shack, all alone and isolated to be born. Not at all. It just meant there's no room in this room. And so, tip, But what we do know from the story is, of course, that Jesus was laying in a manger. And the manger, typically in a Palestinian house, was actually in the main living area. And so I've drawn this here where typically you'd have had an area for the animals at the front of the house and some steps leading up to a raised platform. And on the raised platform, the family would have slept and eaten and stayed and hung out together. And at the edge of the platform, there would have been majors from which the animals could tip over their heads and eat. And so just by sort of breaking this down a little bit, what we really understand happened during the nativity scene is that there was no room in the guest room. But we know that Jesus was laying in a manger. So what that really means is that Jesus, Mary and Joseph, were welcomed into the heart of the family. They were welcomed into where the family stayed. And when Jesus was born, he was laying in the manger that fed the animals. Now, I think that's a really important uh, uh, reading of the Christmas story because it tells us something that is just really good for us today. And, uh, and it is this, that Jesus wasn't born um, necessarily in poverty. He wasn't born away from the crowd. He wasn't born out of the town. He wasn't born out of the city. He was born in the heart of the family. And that's where every Christmas we remind ourselves this Christmas invitation is, Lord, would you be born again in us today? That phrase, us, is not just me, but it's us, our family. Mum, dad, children, grannies, granddads, extended family, whatever shape your family is, Jesus originally was born in the heart of the home. And it is where he should be residing today. On the screens, I'm going to put a little Christmas card from my nephew, Ben and Louis. And, and I think this is one of, the, the, one of the best Christmas cards I've had yet this year in terms of picture. Because it's actually a drawing of the London scene. And it's full of all the London buildings. It captures a little bit of normal life work and pleasure and tourism and fun and home and, and everything that is about life for us in normality. And that is where Jesus is born. Not over there to one side, separated away, but right in the heart of everything that is about normal everyday life for you and I. So I'm really sorry if you are an innkeeper 
in any of your Christmas productions. Um, maybe you could ask for a separate role next year um, because... We should make that redundant to be truthful to the story. Apologies, mums and dads, if I just ruined your Christmas morning. Um, but the key thing here is Jesus was born in the heart of the family, the center of everything that we are. And why don't we pray for that once again to be true and so for us this day. So do you know, if you, whoever you're with, why don't you grab their hand or put an arm on their shoulder or, or sort of, I don't know, giving them a meaningful look um, and uh, uh, we're going to say a little prayer that is actually a prayer for all of us. You might like to hold out your hand in front of you and echo these words in your heart. Thank you, loving Father, that you came to us. Thank you, Lord, that you were born not away and separate, but in the heart of the home, right in the middle of everything that we are. Family. Friends community and we pray once again lord that you will be born afresh and anew in us this day why don't you make that your firm invitation to the lord today and as we reflect a sense of want and desire in our hearts the lord comes and makes his home with us, as he did long ago. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to just uh, continue to reflect with some beautiful music and some prayers. In fact, in fact, Tim is going to come and lead us in a time of prayer. Let's continue our prayers together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you came to be in our midst, in the heart of the family, in the heart of real life. And this Christmas, we pray for our world. We pray for all of those around the world who have been impacted by this pandemic, whose livelihoods have been affected, who have lost loved ones. We pray for a sense of your peace and grace and unity to spread out across us as humanity at this season. And Lord, we pray especially this day for those who are being persecuted for their faith around the world. We remember Christians for whom their Christmas looks very, very different. Strengthen your church around the world. Grant them your grace and your hope this day. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Shall we pray the Lord's Prayer as our Saviour taught us? So we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let's hear some more beautiful Christmas worship together.
Well, it's been great to be together this morning, hasn't it? And uh, we're just going to have a final blessing now. So why don't you just open your hands and be still for a moment. Be grateful that Jesus has come into our world. And as he comes into the complexity of Mary and Joseph's lives, as he's met by shepherds and wise men, people from that we wouldn't expect, as he comes into the chaos of our lives of tier four, of a year of lockdown and virus and challenges with employment, finances, huge griefs, just welcome in Jesus. Son of God, Prince of Peace, welcome the God of Peace into your hearts this Christmas time. And we pray the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you, be in your families, whether together or apart, today and always. Amen. Well, as a whole staff team, we just want to say a very happy Christmas. We're just praying for you. We love you and we look forward to seeing you in the new year. God bless you.